uh, as we can see, we do have a multiple informations available over here. Looks good, but still, uh, as you can see, we are only able to see the header data. So now the next portion that we are going towards is we are going to enrich this application so that it is a proper read only application which contains the header and the item information. OK, so now there is one more concept. Uh, call uh, UI designing that would come into picture and for that there is something called a. Uh, for example, when I say I do have a view, OK. It may contain multiple information regarding the CDS fields. It may contain multiple information regarding the multiple conditions, multiple CDS functions that we are using in order for us to uh, generate the data in the form which the user is asking for. But uh, if we start writing each and every UI designing stuff in the same view, then it will be very clumsy and it, we won't have a proper uh, uh, maintenance. OK, we won't be able to maintain this information properly in that case. So what we'll do is instead we'll create one more CDS artifact called metadata extension, which allows us. Defining uh, the UI designing portion in a separate file, so like maybe um, some of you who would have worked on the UI side as well will know that uh, in the Fiori application we do have an annotation XML file, okay, which allows us generating those annotations in a separate, uh, creating and generating those annotations in a separate file, and the maintenance would be easier in that case. So same way here, if I say uh, I would have something called source code, and I'll just say extract metadata extension. So this is when you have a existing uh, CDS which is containing the UI annotation like we did over here. This is when you will create a extract uh, metadata extract annotation to a new metadata extension and the name ideally SFP suggests keep it as a, sim a similar as whatever your views name is. So I'll just say. Travel, I'll just say metadata extension. Like in UI5, we have a resource model like that. Mm, uh, a kind of. So in UI5, the resource model is I18 file, right? Yeah. So in that resource model, I18 file is uh, just containing I18 and this file just containing the uh, textual readable names Text. of a particular yeah. field. But uh, in uh, UI5 itself, we do have an annotation modeler which helps you design. Like, for example, you want to generate a column selection field. You want to give some sort of a total count. You want to give some sort of search help. You want to define the segmentation. For example, general information facet, item facet. Those all the things are also defined on UI locally using an annotation.xml file, which is having a replica okay. over here in the form of a metadata extension. It's not a resource model 100%. It's a combination of both. Okay. So I'll just go over here and I'll just select the elements over here. For example, I want to pick each and everything that has been written over here till now. And the moment you do a finish, the system will extract all the annotation that you had written, I guess, over there. And for example, if you are working as a in IT service industry, maybe you can say SAP partner, or if, for example, if you are working in a manufacturing or customer industry, you can say core. Uh, so you can say customer. For IT service, I'll just choose as a partner. And the layering has a specific meaning. So for example, if SAP is developing something, they might write core over here. OK, so for example, SAP has defined a metadata extension. Now you are defining a metadata extension as a partner, so that will take more priority. So whatever designing SAP has done will be overridden. But if there is one more metadata extension with a layer called customer, then it will take another um, higher priority because Customers uh, uh, designing takes more precedence over the partner. So likewise, the priority is defined. OK, so most of the things that you are going to see over here is this. So I'll just go with partner because I hope like, most of us are working in a service based industries. OK, you can choose according to uh, your. Uh, role. OK, now over here, if you see um, you, whenever you are defining the UI design separate to that of the logic, you will are required to write one more annotation called metadata dot allow extension on the base view. So if I just go back over here, here as you can see, all the UI annotation that we have written is now uh, removed. So you will just say metadata dot allow extension and you will set it to true. Then only a separate metadata file can be created. Okay, now in order for us to 
made it look better. I'll just remove the empty space that we had. Activate this. Okay, and now we'll activate this as well. Okay, so still we just generated a separate file, but still the output view that we were seeing till now will be the similar. I guess there won't be any change, much change that you will be able to see over here. Okay, now. Let's just move one more step forward. So for example, I'm not sure like how many records are this while I'm scrolling. I can see the pagination. The data is getting auto loaded, which is very good. But now, for example, I want to see number of record. OK, over here and I want to also enrich some sort of a object page part of this as well. So what I'll do is I'll just go over here. And as you can see, this is the information of a per property. So whenever you are defining some sort of a UI enrichment per property, you will write an A notation just above it. So for example, when I say this line item, which is relevant to travel, when I say this line item, which is relevant to travel, but when I say this particular uh, line item in selection field, it is relevant to begin date. So the annotation belong to the component after uh, on which it has been written. If I want to write some sort of annotation on the header side. So for example, here there is something called standard, but what is standard? Is will anyone be able to recognize by looking at just the application what it is all about? No, right? And for that, we have something called UI. Dot header info and here in the header info, maybe you will be able to. Uh, specify the labeling of it, so I'll just go over here and here you have multiple things. So for example, you can say uh, type name over here and here you can specify, for example, um, travels because uh, sorry travel because it's a travel information but there is some one more thing called type name plural plural it means more than one so here the list is more than one so what should be shown over here that is type name plural but when i only refer to one travel for example this travel id one so what should be shown on the page that is the meaning of a type name which is a singular this is plural okay so i'll just say travels over here now, one thing is uh, something which is bit looking odd is first my travel ID should be that then customer ID and likewise. So in order for me to just uh, change this, I'll just define it in a better way. Um, so for example, I just make it 10 and I'll just make it 5. Okay, so it looks good. I'll just activate this. Let's just go back and let us refresh this. Now we just specified the label, but what you will also be able to see additionally is that now at the moment I say go, the system is giving me the count. So while you are giving the header info, your system will also start showing the count of amount of record it has. So for example, if I just say show me the record which are um, let's just say created in Uh, for example, 15th of December 2023, uh, 15th of September 2023. That's the end date. Please show me that. That what all travels will end on 15th of September 2023. The moment you say OK, you will say go and system will give you all the list along with the relevant count. So for this, you are not going to write any single line of logic. This is something which is working out of the box and this will also be applicable while you are working on the transactional application. Uh, this something that we just started with the read only one. OK, now uh, one more thing we'll be doing over here is so for example, we just uh, provided the name. Now at this point in time, if we want to also if I just go over here, you can see this travel which is coming on the top. OK. Now we want to give some sort of information, some sort of a meaningful information for the travel. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just provide uh, something travel ID and uh, I can say agency ID of it, for example. OK, so what we'll do is we'll just have a couple of more information. In the header info, so which says that you can define a title over here. And in the title you have a uh, 
something called type that you can have multiple type of title that you can specify. For example, standard or for example, someone somewhere you want to give some sort of a navigation hyperlink kind of thing. So for example, we'll just go with the standard as it's a beginning for us. I'll just say value. So what will be the value that you want to specify over here? So in the title, I want to specify, for example, my travel ID. Uh, in the description, for example, if you would have some sort of a tight uh, travel description, the purpose of it, you can do that. Or for example, as we don't have anything, but uh, just to see the functionality, maybe we'll also define something called uh, a customer ID or I can say agency ID. So let's just do an agency ID. So at least by looking at the screen, someone would be able to figure out, okay, what is the agency's information that it is carrying? Or by which agency this travel was planned? Okay, just refresh this. As you can see, system is giving me the proper header information over here. Now my next task is that I want to break down the information into a, a certain short of a, a facets. So when I say facets, what does it mean? That for example, if I just go over here, I know I do have a parent information called uh, travel information, which is a general information for any travel. So I'll just give a facet called general information over here. On top of it, I can have some sort of a uh, item information as well, which gives me uh, like what all items. For example, if I do have two bookings associated, I should also be able to see one tab over here called item and here I should be able to see the booking. Or I can say uh, travel detail and here I can say booking detail. That's also one of the possibility. OK, so for us to do that, we have to define some sort of a facet, but that will be at view layer. And that's why what we'll be doing is we'll just say at the rate UI dot over here. And here we have to define a facet. OK, so facets are of multiple type. Facets are of multiple type. The ultimate purpose of facet is to group the data. OK, so the ultimate purpose of facet is to uh, group the data. That's all you can consider it as of. So for example, I want to uh, di uh, divide the information of the travel into multiple things. For example, the travel ID, agency ID, uh, customer ID into a basic data, and I want to define the begin date, end date into a duration, and I can say uh, a total price into my pricing. OK, that's what I want to uh, divide it into. So what you can do is you can define a facet for general information. For you to define a facet, you have multiple information. So for example, if you put con control space, you will see multiple information over here. I'll just say ID. For example, I'll just say ID for general or I can say travel information. OK, and here I'll define a facet which will in contain collection of information. So for example, one collection for a uh, basic data, another collection for uh, schedule and another collection for pricing. OK, so I'll just say which is what is the type of this particular uh, facet? I'll just say it will be a collection facet. OK, and uh, here I'll just give a label for this. So the label of this will be, let's just say I can call it as a travel detail. OK, and I want this facet to be starting first. So now you understand the meaning of position. Position is just there to short out the two or uh, do a shorting of a relevant information. So I'll just start it at 10. So in case some facet is also coming before that, I can uh, easily mark it as a one to nine anything. So it will start showing at the first. So I'll just define a facet called travel detail. Now in the travel detail, for example, I want to define uh, some sort of a information, for example, a basic data. OK, so I'll just say ID over here. And I'll just say um, ID uh, basic data for others. OK, and here uh, this particular type can be what what all things I can assign. You can specify a collection which we already did. For example, you want to define some sort of a field groups. So what is a field group? So I want to group these three fields into one travel ID, agency ID and customer ID. I want to group all those fields and that's where the concept of field group reference will come into picture. I want to define all this vertically straight 
So in that case, uh, you can define identification reference. So let's just go with a. I can say uh, all of them at the same time. So I'll just go with identification reference. One, one will make identification. One will make a field group reference. OK. Label, for example, over here and here we'll say that I want to have some sort of a basic data over here. And uh, here I will just define a position that uh, this particular group within this collection within this collection. So when I say within this collection, how can I define that? For that you have to define one more information called parent saying which particular collection facet it belongs to. So I'll just say parent ID. So this is my parent ID. OK, so it belongs in this particular travel information. So there is a collection which contains a facet name travel detail, which is having one more free, uh, subsection or I can say identification reference called basic data and which will show you this information. Now the moment you say identification reference, you have to specify this. Uh, I can say. At the rate UI dot identification. OK, and here you will specify the field which you want to specify over there. So for example, I'll just say position here. If you see you have one more information called qualifier that what all things you want to group. So for example, I can have more than one identification reference, right? So what all fields I want in this particular identification reference facet and for that I do have something called a target qualifier. So for example, I'll just say uh, target qualifier for basic data. I'll just copy this and I'll just paste it over here. So the moment I specify this, this field should start appearing in my basic data uh, identification reference section. So for example, I want this three information to appear over there. Travel ID should be appear first. Uh, this information should be next. So that's where we'll be defining 10, 20 and 30. OK, now I'll just activate this to have a glimpse of like how it will be looking alike. Then we'll enrich, the, enrich it further. I'll just refresh this because uh, if you just open it, there are pretty good chances that it might pick it from cache. That's why I prefer refreshing it. I'll just open this. Now, as you can see, it is having a travel detail. OK, it says basic data and it is having all these three information piled up on it. So these are travel detail, which is one of the facet. Now I'll just go back now along with the travel detail. I want one more information called a uh, schedule travel schedule for example so here as well we'll define one more a reference facet which is part of the same collection travel information so i'll just say id uh, i can say uh, schedule and here i have to specify field group reference sorry I just say travel uh, schedule. And here you will specify um, the parent. So what will be the parent? It will be the same. I just say target qualifier will be schedule. OK, now here you will specify. The schedule of it. I'll just say this should be my first and this should be my second because I'm defining the position within the particular facet. So there is my field group reference this time. That's why this should not be an identification. Instead, this should be a field group. So I'll just copy this and I'll just paste this. So there is a meaning of a identification reference and field group reference. So there are um, multiple ways of grouping the data. Identification being one and field group being another one. So when you are specifying identification reference, the field that you will be defining as a placeholder will be UI dot identification while you are going with field group reference. The field that you will define will be in the form of a UI dot field group. I'll just activate this. Go back, refresh. I 
I do have a travel schedule. So as you can see, this ultimately grouping the data. Now earlier it was a, a screen is responsive. So earlier it was showing it all in single line. Now as the another facet is started popping up over here, it is ultimately grouping the data and making this occupies less number of space. The last but not the least thing that we'll specify again. Let's just define one more. Uh, information over here call ID pricing. OK, and here we'll specify again field group reference over here and we'll just say pricing. Parent will be same and here I'll just say. Target qualifier will be this. OK, and here we'll specify this TQ pricing. Let's just go back and let's just refresh this page. Here, as you can see, now I do have three proper section identification, field group, and field group, and I do have one facet available over here. Let's just move one more step forward. And here we want to define uh, some sort of a uh, table for your booking data that we had. Okay. Now when we say I do have booking data, ultimately it will be one more reference. So like we had, a, um, I can say collection facet over here. Same way uh, we would be defining one more information like this collection, but this time it won't be a collection. I can define a reference as well. So what sort of reference will be specifying? So if you just go back over here and define one more reference, oh, sorry. Copy this. OK, and I want to define uh, booking information, for example. OK, and here I'll just say. It, I what I want to specify is a table columns and how I can define column using line items UI dot line item. And that's why I'll just call it as a line item reference. And this time I'll call it as a. Booking detail. And this will be 20 in the position. I'll just define it as a 20. Uh, so uh, we have a proper label also defined for that. We have a proper type as well. And what we want to navigate it to. So for us to navigate it to, we have a target element. So what we want to navigate it to. So if you just say control space, you will see multiple information. So I want it to get navigated to bookings. OK, so I'll just activate this. OK, and now if I just go and refresh this. If you just go back and just try opening this. You will see that OK, there is a, another facet called booking detail. And now if you just go in setting, you will see all the columns which are available. Now out of which if you want to go uh, show something default, I'll just go ahead and create some sort of a line item over here. So another way of metadata extension creation I was mentioning is just right click over here. Just new. OK, and uh, here I'll just go over here and I'll just say uh, metadata. Extension. I'll just say ZC. Uh, booking V. I can say uh, booking. MDE metadata extension. And I'll just annotate a view. Uh, sorry, it will be annotated entity. Let it be. I'll do. So I'll just say I'm being as a partner and I want to annotate which particular view. So I'll just say I want to annotate a uh, view call uh, booking over here. I'll just copy this over here, paste it over here. And here I have to specify some column on for which I want to have the. Um, for example, these are the column which we do have. So let's just pick all of them. Paste it over here. So what all things will change? So here you have to specify a semicolon first. 
So here there cannot be a comma or everything should be semicolon first. And another thing that should that's also very important is you cannot define any key definition or anything. It should only be field and the UI designing part of it. OK, uh, now the moment you are specifying this, you will get the same error that metadata not allow extension is not there. I'll just pick it from here and paste it in my booking. So at least it will not give me any error. Activate this. OK, let's just go back and now I'll just do a syntax check. Hopefully I should not have any error, but yeah, this one. So I would need to specify at least one. So I'll just say uh, I don't want to show, uh, for example, uh, the travel ID because I'm in the travel. So what is the meaning of specifying the travel ID? So I'll just specify another information only. Um, so I'll just say uh, booking. So for that, I'll specify line item position 10 and likewise I'll start specifying multi for all of them. Fourteen. And Sumit, to reiterate, yep. we are leaving these, grab, these gaps between them so that later on, if we add fields, we can just add eleven. Exactly. E exactly. That's the reason. So I guess in the earlier session, maybe as we mentioned, right? What is the meaning of ten twenty? So while you are generating any annotation, so I guess just to give you a glimpse of it to understand your to uh, for you to make it understand even better. If you just go and open the service URL. OK, and here if you just say. Uh, dollar metadata. If you search for. Line I OK, I guess they are not specifying it over here, unfortunately. OK, so the thing is the moment you specify the metadata annotation with the position, it will ultimately short this information and uh, pass it to the UI annotation. So on UI, there is nothing called position. It is just relative that this is first, this is second. So if there is something called 11, 12, then it will belong somewhere in between. So in case someone something is there in between, we can fit it easily. That's the meaning of position. OK, OK. So now if I just specified this, now if I just go back and uh, refresh my application. On it. You should be able to see the line items also popping up. So for this particular travel, I can see this two info, two bookings are there. But for this travel, I can see, for example, there are uh, 10, 12 bookings also available. So this is how without any UI changes, you will be able to have the preview of the application. When you actually create a UI application, all you have to do is you have to just consume the service endpoint. So this metadata which I just opened, your UI application will just consume this and it will have automatically this all this particular UI layer created without any specific UI changes. So this is how your uh, UI effort actual development effort will also get reduced. So your behavior is also containing multiple such functionality. For example, marking field as a mandatory, providing validation messages, uh, um, I can say uh, uh, changing value of one field based on another field change. So those all the stuff can also be controlled nowadays from the wrap architecture. So that's what, something they, that we'll be learning while we start with the transactional application going forward. So any doubts, any questions till now? No, not as of 